Well, that now one of the biggest market stories we're seeing, of course, falling interest rates around the world. Some major economies now have government bonds with negative yields, and uh, bond powerhouse PIMCO is among the voices warning U.S. Treasuries could join this group. Here with more is Mark Kiesel, PIMCO Global Credit Chief Investment Officer. Very good to see you. Good morning to you. I mean, what chance do you put on negative rates here in the U.S.? Well, I think um, it's not likely near term, but ultimately, if we have a recession, we do think the Fed will go to zero and expand QE. So a lot of this is going to be predicated on the trade war. Do we get a resolution there? Um, growth last year was basically 3 percent real. It's now slowed considerably to 1.5 percent real. So there's no it's logical rates are coming down because slower growth, low inflation and, and low inflationary expectations. But whether or not we get negative rates we'd actually need to see a U.S. recession for that to, to happen. Mark, if we talk about the last uh, 10 days in, uh, in bond markets, uh, which uh, we all know how Treasuries reacted with a sharp fall, a bit of a recovery at the end of last week uh, in terms of yields, how did credit uh, uh, track that? So we've seen a rotation into high-quality credit. Um, clearly, high yield, which has more of an equity beta component, has underperformed. The higher quality sectors are outperforming, like the non-cyclicals, utilities, telecom towers. And what's really underperforming has been the global manufacturing sector, autos, retailers, a lot of these sectors which are going to be much more vulnerable to the U.S.-China trade war. And so where are the opportunities in, in credit that you're seeing at the moment? Do you want to stick with, with where that rotation uh, has seen money going into, higher quality, I think you said? Yes. Yeah, so basically, we think the equity market is at risk here. We think growth is slowing pretty sharply around the world. So we want to take low risk in portfolios overall. In credit, we want to stay up in quality. We still like the consumer. The consumer is still doing quite well with, with decent wage growth and low rates supporting the consumer. So we do like telecom. We like cable towers. We also like real estate. So REITs should outperform, particularly as rates go lower. And U.S. housing market's actually holding up quite well. So we do like non-agency mortgages as well as building materials. Overall, though, we would favor very high-quality bonds right now, given, given slower growth and given the trade vulnerabilities. Uh, in, uh, just a question on uh, the negative rates in, the, in, in Europe and the, uh, the demand for yield in the world. What impact is that having on your uh, view of long-term rates, whether there's a recession or not? So I think, you know, long-term rates will come down, particularly given low inflation and the fact that recession risks are rising. If you look at rates in Japan, 10-year yields are minus 22 basis points. 10-year yields in Germany are minus 58 basis points. Believe it or not, 30-year German yields are minus 8. So basically, there's very low yield offered all over the world. In fact, there's now uh, 15 trillion of negative yielding sovereign government bond assets around the world. So that should support U.S. Treasuries. And I do think with low inflation and global growth slowing, uh, U.S. Treasuries relative to rest of global bond markets should be supported. Peter, when we see weeks like last week and you see U.S. Treasury yields slide, it's clearly because of risk off sentiment and therefore that is bad for U.S. equities. But if volatility in treasuries settles down, do these lower rates actually support U.S. equities in, in a sort of uh, relative sense? Well, I think Mark made uh, a number of good points. The, uh, the search for yield is going to continue to support long-term uh, treasuries, in my, in my view. But that doesn't mean that, uh, that there's not a real risk of earnings slowdown or earnings declines. And so I think uh, equities are going to continue to be volatile as there becomes more clarity around whether there is going to be a recession or this is just a growth slowdown and growth reaccelerates. We see no evidence right now that growth is reaccelerating. We just continue to see evidence of growth slowing and uh, we see evidence of continued, uh, continued volatility. And so I think, you know, Mark is talking about investing in things that have a little less volatility, have a little bit more higher quality to them. Uh, and I think that probably makes sense in this environment.